Greetings, my name's Rob, and you might know me from a Twitch and YouTube channel called Slant Alpha Adventures. Our captain for the series is going to be Max, who you might know from his YouTube and Twitch channels called Citation Max. On behalf of that USA, Max and myself, welcome to our flight across America. This series is going to take you step by step through a fairly standard airliner flight within VAT USA. In our first episode, we're going to cover choosing your origin and destination, creating a route, determining your required fuel load, connecting to the network, filing your flight plan, and obtaining and understanding your IFR clearance. And now we'll turn things over to your captain, Max. Max, your airplane, my friend. Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing really well. Today, we're doing a beginner's flight. Basically, we're just going to show you how to fly from a big class member airport to a smaller airport. Something that anyone could do day to day flying on the amazing network that is VATSIM. Today, we're flying from here in Denver International Airport to sunny and beautiful Dallas, Texas in this American Airlines A320 aircraft. It's a, uh, uh, a paid aircraft by Fenix. It's a gorgeous A320 and uh, it's going to be an amazing flight. So basically, I'm just going to kind of take you along for the ride on what it's like to fly an A320 on VATSIM with air traffic control. And I hope you enjoy the flight. So welcome aboard. Let's take a look to see what air traffic control services are available within VAT USA right now and what traffic levels are like. There are a number of different sites and apps you can use for this, but the simplest is called Simaware, technically at simaware.ca, but map.vatsim.net redirects you here as well. Make sure you click on the ATC button at the bottom to see what controllers are online. The larger white outlined areas indicate that there's one or more center controllers working in that airspace. The smaller blue boundaries indicate where approach control was online. And an airport ICAO identifier with a T, a G, or an A next to it indicates that a tower, ground, or ATIS broadcast is currently available there. We're going to be here in Denver, and we're going to Dallas Loves Airport, which is actually a great airport. We're going to go here and uh, align the IRSs, so that is working on that. And we're today going to be American 503. So a couple things here, uh, things that I like to do on the network when I'm flying with obviously air traffic controllers is to take it with a high level of proficiency like I would if I was flying real world. And even if you're not a real world pilot, it's still very, very good to always take it seriously. There's other people flying the network, and it's just uh, important. For our flight across America, Max has chosen a flight between Denver International Airport and Dallas Love Field. There are a number of tools you can use to find a realistic route and determine your distance, time, and required fuel load. Max is going to use one called Simbrief, which is part of a company called Navigraph. Simbrief is free to use, although there are some subscription options to keep your aircraft's navigation database current that you can get through Navigraph, and you can link that subscription in your Simbrief profile to use that same data here. So I used a uh, flight planning software called Simbrief. So today we're flying here in Denver to Dallas, an hour and 30 minutes, 35,000 feet, cost index of 35. Um, they gave us our route, which is going to be the EPC uh, 7 departure, doozy transition, and then a few different VORs along our flight with some fixes, and then we're going to join the uh, standard terminal arrival route, which is the Jeffrey 5 arrival from the Hyde's transition into Dallas. We have no dispatch remarks, so we're looking really good on that front, and uh, let's go ahead in here and load up the airplane. For a commercial air carrier flight, the route that Simbrief provides is usually going to be pretty good. Note that the runways it lists here under route are simply suggestions or recommendations. Actual runways in use will be determined by your air traffic controllers working those airports on VATSIM. If you've selected your aircraft type correctly, the fuel loading recommendation Simbrief provides should be pretty good as well. Notice here that it lists an en route burn of almost 7,900 pounds, but the block fuel is just over 15,600 pounds. Personally, I use the word ARC, A-R-C, to remind myself of the alternate reserve and contingency fuels you should carry in addition to the fuel that you expect to burn on your trip. One important step that Max is going to speed through here for you is entering all of the data from the Simbrief dispatch paperwork in terms of the passenger load, cargo load, and fuel load into his simulated aircraft. All right, cool. So the irises are loading up. 
Let's come over here, we'll use our FMS2. We're not gonna use uh, a fancy loading software, loading um, program. We're just gonna do it super simple and keep it all in the airplane today. This video is really about just showing you how to fly on the network um, and basically not mess up. So we have ACARS, so our ACARS clearance came in. So let's read it together. VPilot is the pilot client app that Max is gonna to use to connect his simulator to VATSIM. If your sim platform of choice is X-Plane, you'll probably use one called X-Pilot, which is pretty similar. There's also one called Swift that's available. When you open the pilot client and go to connect, your simulator should already be loaded in with your plane parked at a ramp or a gate. There are some limited circumstances where you can connect mid-air, but when you're connecting on the ground, never connect in the middle of a taxiway or a runway. So we're flying here American 503, we're an A320 slant in Lima. Denver to Dallas, our route, Epke 7, Doozy, Golf Charlie Kilo, Mike Mike Bravo, Philgo, Hides, and the Jeffrey 5 arrival. One very vital tip, don't close this tab until you're airborne. In our next episode, you'll see a great example of why this is important. We've got altitude 350, we're going to squawk 5637, remarks, cleared Epke 7 departure, Doozy transition, climb via the SID, right, so that's really important, so we're going to, when we brief the departure, we have Remember that we've been cleared to only climb via the SID and we'll expect 350 in 10 minutes. So that does not mean we can climb straight up to 35,000 feet. We're going to have to meet the restrictions on the standard terminal uh, departure. Uh, 10 minutes after departure, 20, uh, 10 minutes after departure, cool. Uh, departure frequency is 122.8, so Unicom and expect runway 8, contact 12185 for push. At this point, Max has already filed his flight plan on the network and the controller's already looked it over to make sure there aren't any errors or inconsistencies with the routing. The controller then sends what's called a PDC, or a pre-departure clearance. It comes in text form and it comes in a private message sent to your pilot client. If you don't get one of those, your next move would be to check in with the appropriate VATSIM controller and request a clearance. That would ordinarily be a clearance delivery controller, but in the absence of one, those duties then fall to the ground controller working the airport. If there isn't a ground, all that would then be handled by tower. And if there's no tower, then the departure or approach controller working that sector would have all of those duties. Finally, if none of those are online, all of that responsibility falls upward to the sensor controller. And when one person has all those duties across an entire air TCC, you often need to exercise some patience because an aircraft that is in the air moving has higher priority over one waiting on the ground. Whether you get your clearance by voice or by text, the key elements it contains are going to be covered by the acronym CRAFT. Clearance limit, route, altitude, frequency, and transponder. You can see here on Max's PDC that his clearance limit is the destination airfield, Dallas Love, KDAL. The route is the same one that he filed, which was on his sim brief paperwork, but you definitely need to check and see whether it changed, because sometimes that does happen. The altitude comes in two parts, an initial altitude and a note on when to expect your cruise altitude. Now, the initial altitude here is a bit special. You notice it says, climb via SID. We're going to cover more about what that means in detail in our next episode. Frequency here refers to the departure frequency. That's the controller that the tower will hand you off to as soon as you leave the runway. Here it's listed as 122.8, which is VATSIM's global en route Unicom frequency. Basically means that at the moment there isn't a live controller who will be handling the flight after wheels up. Finally, the transponder part is simply your squawk code. Sometimes it's called the beacon code. That's just that four-digit number that you dial into your transponder, which identifies your specific radar blip as American 503 going from Denver to Dallas Love. The other information at Max's PDC is an expected departure runway and a frequency to call before pushing back. You won't see that in every PDC. Sometimes the runway assignment is contained in the ATIS information, and sometimes you just have to wait to be assigned a runway by the ground controller. In most airports in VAT USA, you only need permission to push back and start up if you're pushing onto a taxiway. Most of the time, if you're pushing onto a ramp or into an alley area, you can do that at your discretion and contact ground when you're ready to roll. But in this case, they've indicated a frequency you need to contact before you push back. So that'll be important that Max does this when the time comes. Departure is here. So a couple things here you can look at. 
uh, big Bravo airports, there's either a arrival latest or a departure latest. They're different. So today we're information Mike. Again, we're planning runway 8 for departure. Wind out of the east, northeast, 10 miles, few clouds in the air. It's a really pretty uh, afternoon. 2990, so we'll update that ATIS there. And we got information Mike. A moment ago, I mentioned ATIS. It's the Automated Terminal Information System, which contains the latest weather observation, notes on which runways are active and in use, and other operationally relevant things going on at the airport. They assign each one a letter, and each time the message is updated, they increment the letter by one. So when you check in with ground, you should let them know which letter it was that you heard, and that way they can verify that you have the most updated version of the message. You can tune the radio to the ATIS frequency and hear the message read on a repeated recording, but on VATSIM, a lot of times it's just simpler to open it up via text in the pilot client, which is what Max has done here. In our next episode, we'll cover how to brief for your departure, which is that SID that we talked about earlier, as well as your takeoff, including relevant V speeds and finally your taxi routing. Thanks for joining us for this flight across America. My name's Rob, and on behalf of Max and Avat USA, we'll see you next time. <laughs>